So this is one of the hikes for the day. I forgot to say what campground I'm in. This is Cosby, C-O-S-B-Y. Um, and that's where we're heading, Hemwallow Falls. Uh, probably turn around and then there's another trail up further up the mountain here that we might give a try today. It depends on whether it starts raining or not. It's just, well, you can see it's just, this, this is about one o'clock in the afternoon and it hadn't dried out at all. So let's get on the trail. So I didn't tell you, but I'm bringing an umbrella. <laughs> now this is that special umbrella that I told you about that it's got, uh, it's double reinforced. Uh, I can use it as a walking stick if I need to, but this is what I call a civilian trail. So we're not gonna be worried about snakes or any of that. I didn't put the snake leggings on or any of that crap. I just, but I do have my hiking pants on. I was getting bit back at the campsite. I mean, it's muggy here. Now, just to tell you, you know, how people are, <laughs> I just saw five kids. I can, I say kids, they're probably in their twenties or thirties, but uh, one of them had sandals on. Now, I don't know how you walk up <laughs> something, something like this with sandals, but you know, you could tell he was, he was the one in furthest in the back. So I imagine his feet were hurting just a little bit. And I got my hikers on, you know, and I got the, the pants blouse and the only gear that I brought was the umbrella and some bug netting. So uh, we'll get some more footage further on up the trail. But I uh, just kind of want to show you what, what I call a civilian trail because it's, it's way cut back. You haven't got no heavy grass or, you know, foliage like that that you're hiking through, which is kind of what I usually do. But I'm just taking it easy. I, with all the rain, it's just miserable. Now this is something you don't usually see on a civilian trail, right? If somebody falls off of this, you know, anywhere else, uh, maybe a state forest campground or even a private campground, there'd be a lawsuit pending. I, I, you know, I like it. I think it's pretty cool. You, know, you just gotta take it slow. I'm gonna have to hold the phone in one hand and you know, you can just get out here and get the water. I'm not too worried. <clears throat> if you fall, just lean into the rail. Take it nice and slow. Woo. So there you go. Now I'll just shuffle sideways, just kind of get you a view. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, that's why you come out here. So let's look around at the other side, coming down. Now this isn't the falls, of course. This is just a creek that we're passing over and that's where the trail was going. So, hey, by the way, <laughs> you don't have to get old. You know, I just passed a couple there, both in their 80s. And uh, they, uh, unlike the kids, they were equipped. They had hiking shoes on and, uh, you know, of course, the, the, the floppy hat like I've got and the whole whole thing. And, uh, you know, they were, obviously, they did the whole trail probably up. They didn't even look like they were winded. And I'm going to tell you, I'm fat and I'm a lot younger. And uh, I was winded coming up the mountain there. Now it's going to keep going up. But this is nothing compared to what I just came up. All right, let's, let's keep on going. So just kind of came up that and there's been a lot steeper if you inclined. They told me it's going to get even steeper as we go along, but you know, kind of a neat little bridge here. Isn't that cool? You know, that's stuff you see when you come out. By the way, I passed uh, a woman a little ways back and uh, I'd say she was about 100, 150 pounds overweight. <laughs> you know, but that, you know what? I totally just admire her. You know, you, you got to come up here on these trips and try to get some exercise and just plow through whatever you know, uh, disability you have. And I, I ain't gonna lie, I, I had to go to the facility about four, four times <laughs> to make sure I was ready just for this little hike. So it won't be this little one, hopefully we'll be hiking some more once we get to the top. So, uh, hey, another video idiot tip. Uh, phone kept telling me if I press do not disturb. Remember when the phone would bleep at me on earlier videos? I kept thinking that it meant the phone was overheating, you know, and, uh, but it wasn't. So anyway, we're just stopping here. I want you to get a view. You know, these are, look at these trees. <laughs> I mean, sometimes we just want to get into the hike and we forget to stop and kind of just take a look at things. I mean, look at that monster right there. It just goes way up. And then if you look back behind me, you know, here's some really cool rock formation going up. Now doesn't that rock just look like it's just going to fall right off of there? I imagine it will someday, but it's kind of 
Kind of pretty cool. There's another rock back there. Let's walk on back a little bit. So, been meeting a lot of people on the trail. I guess these Tennesseans, man, they, they're into their hiking and staying in shape. We got to give them credit. And uh, looking down the trail here, you know, it's kind of, kind of a little flat part. I just thought I'd kind of rest up. And supposedly it's going to get even rougher here very soon. Um, here's a tip for somebody who's an entrepreneur. And I came up with this idea, so I think I should get some money for it. But why don't we invent a walking stick umbrella? You know, because the reason why I came up with that was in Florida, I was constantly uh, going out 30% chance of rain. And by the time, because I was training, you know, for this trip and, uh, you know, it's just start pouring down rain and all you got on is a hat and a shirt and you just everything gets soaked, you know. So finally one day I just decided to take my golf umbrella and uh, you know what, walking in the rain with an umbrella uh, even on a hike, you know, it's not that bad. And if you're on a trail like this, an umbrella, this is a medium size. I wouldn't carry the whole big golf umbrella, you know. Um, but it, it'd be work just fine here. The only thing is you can't use it as a walking stick and an umbrella at the same time. But if you're going for a hike like this, you're hoping it's not going to rain. And so far, it hasn't. Now, that hike back down is going to be treacherous. And, uh, boy, I tell you, I'm not used to these elevations, even though I train. The, other, the one thing that I got over... The people here is everybody's been talking about how hot it is. It ain't hot. It feels nice and cool to me because <laughs> so, of what what I did in Florida and Alabama and everywhere else. So this feels really nice. So I, at least I have that advantage. But they're used to going up and down mountains, and I, I'm not. All right, let's let's continue on along. So we're we're in the last point one miles of the trail here before the waterfall. I hear it's not a whole lot to hike up a mountain to see it, but. Uh, Anyway, while I'm going down, I'm, see, I'm not using the umbrella as a hiking stick. You know, it just give me three points of balance. Uh, you know, that's why I brought it, number one. And number two, it rains. And uh, speaking of rain, you know, a trail like this, it's fine when it's dry like this. It's just got to take little baby steps, take it slow, you know. Boy, if you, if you, if you tripped on a root or slipped on a rock, you know, you, you're, you're going to tumble a long ways. And, you know, you hit something like that with your neck or your head. You could uh, you could definitely brain yourself, so you know it's it's all just being careful. But uh, hey, a little little history behind this park. Uh, I asked the ranger. Of course, you know I was trying to get some stories, and they wouldn't <laughs> they would they wouldn't tell me any stories. I guess they're worried about. I said I said I don't have to put your face on the video, or I said or you could just tell me the stories, and I'll relate them like I did, you know, with the guy in the other park. And uh, so anyway, she wouldn't tell me any stories, but. Uh, but she did give me a little bit of the history. Now, she said this was built by the Civilian Corps of Engineers. Now, I know the Army Corps of Engineers. I stayed at their base in Gulfport to play golf when I was in the military. But I don't know a civilian. I'll have to look that up when I get to Lynchburg and see who and what they were. But I guess this was all built in the 40s. And, you know, a lot of our national parks and anything of consequence in this country was built in the 30s and 40s and 50s. You know, I think that was a, a golden age for our country before, uh, before you know, um, politicians and corporate greed. You know, when, when you look at what's going on today, you know, you got uh, corporate executives that just line their pockets. You know, they, they're making millions upon millions while they're paying their workers as little as possible, importing all their talent from uh, India and, and other countries. So they don't have to pay them what they might have to pay an American. And you know, there's a lot of Americans now that are unemployed that would work for the same salary as, a, as an Indian. And they're very smart people. Or there's probably people like me, you know. I don't consider myself a total idiot, although I'm a video idiot. Uh, you know, I'm really good with computers and I work for the government and corporations, you know, National Security Agency among, among others, you know. And I've kept up with the computer technology just because it's a hobby of mine. But, uh, you know, I got um, co-morbidities and mobilities or whatever, morbid morbidities. God, I can't even pronounce that damn word. But, uh, so, you know, I can only work, you know, maybe four hours a day, kind of a part-time job. And corporations, you know, if you can't put in 60 hours a week uh, and, and take 10 days of vacation a year and only get, and try not to take any sick leave, they don't want you, you know. So they go out and they hire these young cats. I'm not saying they're not smart, you know. A lot of them guys at Google are pretty young. When I say young, 20s, 30s, maybe even in their 40s. But uh, you, you don't see many old timers 
you know, at, at companies like that, because, uh, you know, they want you to work a gazillion hours, and now they do provide. I've got some tricky roots I'm going over. See, I'm using the umbrella. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of work out there. So hire two or three people like me. You know, I'll work in the afternoon, and they could work in the morning, and you just divide it up. And uh, I guarantee you they get a heck of a lot of productivity out of that. And, uh, you know, when I talk about corruption, too, it, you know, it also is political corruption that's really ruined the country. Uh, you know, you got Obama living in million dollars. I think he's got more than one million dollar mansion. Now, where did all that money come from? He certainly didn't make that as a, on his Senate salary. And from what I understand, before he became a senator, he only had, you know, $150,000 a year job, which ain't bad. I can live very good on $150,000. But, uh, and then you got Biden and Hunter Biden and they're, and Biden's whole family's rich, you know. And the worst, my God, is Nancy Pelosi. Now, I'm just listing off Democrats. I'm sure there's Republicans. And, you know, here's a, here's a clue to the drive-by mainstream media. I do watch CNN and ABC and CBS. You know, find, this, find some good Republican corruption. You know, everybody says, oh, Trump's corrupt. You know, well, yeah, he got those loans from Deutsche Bank. And uh, I don't think anybody else would have loaned him that money. You know, but uh, he did something with it. He built things. Uh, some of them worked. Some of them didn't, you know, but he didn't just uh, line his pockets and, like Bernie Madoff and live on a yacht and, and ripped everybody off. Now, I'm not saying Trump, <laughs> he's got he's got his own ghosts in the closet for sure, but uh, not as many, I think, as, as some of the Democrats. And, and I would love to know about Mitch McConnell and some of them guys, you know, go out and dig up some dirt, man. That's if you want to score some political points and convert people like me over to the voting Democrat, because I consider myself an independent, not this year, but, you know, most years. Uh, oh, and here's another thing. Um, if we were talking about the, the history, you know, behind the park. I'd like to said, I love history. And I heard that they're trying to rename my hometown Lynchburg, Virginia, because the Antifa and Black Lives Matter say that's racist. They call it Lynchburg. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and here's a little history lesson for you. Um, Lee, when he was retreating, you know, he was trying to get the Lynchburg. And Grant force marched his men to cut him off before he could get to Lynchburg, because Lynchburg is a supply point. He was going to resupply his troops. That war could have lasted another year, perhaps, if uh, Lee had made it to Lynchburg. I still think the North probably would have won. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so Grant had to cut him off. I, I can't imagine. He might probably killed a few of the soldiers force marching them to cut Lee off. Um, so there's a lot of history behind Lynchburg, and, you know, there's no reason to rename that town. That's just the stupidest thing. You know, the Redskins are gone. You know, how far do we want to take this uh, history erasure thing? I, I'm not for it at all. I'm, I, I want to learn history. History's what teaches you about the future because history repeats itself. And the only good thing about Antifa and Black Lives Matter is they're going to be ignorant of their past. So they're not going to be able to anticipate what happens in the future. So I'm hoping another generation will come along who have studied history and uh, it either put it back or just defeat that whole movement altogether. Anyway, you guys have a good one. Let's get on. Well, heck, what am I doing? Let's get down here and enjoy the fall. I get to thinking in my brain rather than hiking. See, here's another one. You know, you got to be real careful. This rock, boy, if it was super wet, it'd be really slick. Ah, oh, gosh. See, I'm also tired from climbing up that mountain, so you know, you got to got to be careful here. Oh, ah, there we go. See, see if I didn't have this third point of. Uh, of balance this would be tough so all right hiking over some roots here let's just enjoy the waterfall i don't have much more to say uh i'd still moist but nice and cool uh nothing dried out by the way so let me get up on this rock here this is probably as far as i'm gonna go whoa so there you go uh, that's what we hike 2.1 miles for uh, it's not a huge waterfall, but it's pretty cool. Kind of look on down here. So here you go. Now they got the right idea. They're going to sit down and relax. Let's look over here. A little mossy rock. One more look at the waterfall. All right, folks. If I think of something else to talk about, we'll try to pick something on the way back that I didn't cover the first on the way up, you know. Try not to take too much video because I... I hate cutting it out. You know, I'm only trying to take stuff that I think that you would enjoy. All right. Bye.
there's a little different view of the waterfall. There's a guy, he got up there and actually got underneath it. It's pretty cool. I'm not doing that. I kind of want to show you, and then here's the water coming down. I did this just for you because I about killed myself trying to climb over that right there. I got to be super careful going back. I think I'm going to put this phone in my pocket. Try to use three points of those, uh, stand. Look at it one more time. All right, here we go. Let's get, see if I can keep from killing myself. All right, a little more scenery. Let's flip it around to get a selfie. Ooh, something falling out of the tree. So yeah, trees do make noise when they fall. We're just gonna kind of walk along here. Anyway, there's a guy back there. <laughs> the stuff you see, he decided he's gonna get up to the waterfall and get under it, I guess. I don't know what he was doing, but he got stuck. And uh, I didn't want to get him in the video because you know, you're, you can be liable if you get other people in your video. I mean, I don't think anything would come of it, but I just don't want to, I'm trying to keep this as, as clean as possible. I'm not putting any uh, corporate signs in here. Or, you know, any other people film, especially filming their kids for anything. I mean, I wish I could have filmed them kids, man. They, they were in flip-flops like, once again. And uh, how in the hell you hike this in flip-flops? I, <laughs> I don't even know, but... But they had plenty of energy, man. One of them jumped up in here, off a rock, landed, landed back down. We made it! We made it! Yay! I think they're playing in the water right now. So, hey, a few clips back. Oh, here we go. I got some more people coming. Let's shut the camera off. Hold on. I'll get to that. So, this was kind of something I saw on the way in. I didn't video. Kind of a rock guy, you know. We don't get to see this in Florida. <laughs> But, uh, and then coming in right here. So I didn't get to finish my thought, you know, so that was, you know, what I think of the Chinese, Chinese Communist Party is I really think they infected, well, once they knew their people were infected, they just uh, knew they had to uh, spread it to the rest of the world. Um, and uh, they weaponized their own people, uh, you know, what they're doing to the Uyghurs and you know, slavery and all that. And, you know, they got a friend in Joe Biden, that's for sure. So, you know, that's just another thing that, that uh, why I can't vote for him. But um, so what else? Oh, anyway, I, I wanted to finish up on Tennessee. So I guess Tennessee, they're following the Swedish model. And uh, there's a lot of experts out now saying that uh, the Swedish model is probably what the whole world should have followed. Uh, now, they did have a lot of uh, older people die. Uh, and I guess, you know, the Swedes, well, they, I think that's where the Vikings came from. I'd have to look back in history. I should they're tough people, you know. They, they said, let, let, let bygones be bygones, you know. Put them on a ship and light it on fire as a funeral pier, I guess, you know. So uh, the other thing I wanted to clue you in, there's a Dr. John Campbell, C-A-M-P-D-E-L-L. -L. He's on YouTube. Now, I've been watching him since this whole thing started. Uh, he does daily videos on the virus. And, uh, you know, one of the things, one of his videos is, you know, the the Chinese, once again, they bought out the uh, World Health Organization. That's a, you know, Trump defunded them, thank God. Totally corrupt. Um, and they also helped the Chinese spread the virus. You know, they, heck, I don't think they declared it a pandemic until, I don't know, sometime either late February or March sometime. It was utterly ridiculous because by that time, it, had always, it was killing people in Italy and South Korea, you know. Anyway, we all know the history. But, uh... So there's, uh, there were a lot of hands that uh, put this pandemic out. And a lot of people dying as a result. And that's enough on that. You won't hear anything on this trip more about that. I just wanted you to know I do take it seriously. And that's why I'm doing this trip. And I think other people, if you've, if you've got a problem, you know, heart condition, you're a cancer survivor, uh, you know, you got diabetes, anything, you know, do all you can. Wear a mask. You know, that's one good thing. Uh, you see, there's something I'm all for. You know, when people go indoors, I'm not for it outdoors. You can't play football with a mask on, you know. You can't uh, go out and work in the yard. Well, I mean, if, you, if you've if got uh, allergies, you might want to put a mask on. But, you know, if it's a hot day, that's rough having a mask on. So I'm not, I'm not for dictating anybody wear a mask except indoors. Because, see, indoors, you can infect other people. And it's just courtesy to wear a mask when you're indoors, you know, because that, that virus, it doesn't have any place to go. 
and uh, one sneeze, one cough, and you know, you're spreading that virus everywhere if you got it and don't know it. So that's, uh, so don't think I'm all, you know, let's just all be free and go about your own business. You know, we gotta, we gotta take steps to do what we can, but shutting down, you know, these democratic mayors and governors that have their states shut down, that's just stupid. You know, all these small businesses, you know, what, what are you gonna do when everybody's homeless? A lot more people are gonna die on the streets from exposure and starvation than whatever have died from the virus. And, and why, what do they have against small business? You know, why are they putting all their businesses out of business? You know, all the hair salons, that poor woman in California, you know, she, she had Pelosi come in without a mask to get a blow. And that was just utterly ridiculous. And uh, so, you know, it's okay for her to go to a hairstylist, but the rest of the state can't use a hairstylist, so they're all out of business. And uh, I know the barbershops in my area, they're, they're closing down. Even in Florida, you know, we still got limited lockdowns. And, you know, you're just going to have to open it all up, get people to use common sense. And, you know, the people that won't use common sense, yeah, you might have to put in a slap on the wrist. You know, if you get a guy in a, a Dollar General and refuses to wear his mask, you know, you might want a little little policy that, you know, they call the police. He's, he's subject to a $100 fine or something like that. You know, not this $3,000 or whatever it is in California. But, uh, okay, there we go. Let's, let's roll. Probably the last video for today. I know you're happy. So, <clears throat> I just saw two people <laughs> hiking up this mountain with backpacks on. Now, I did that when I was young, I guess. You know, I hiked up Flat Top Mountain, which is probably one of the toughest hikes I ever did. Um, but, you know, on a, on a wet day, like today and plus you know they're probably going to get wet tomorrow and maybe tonight i wouldn't want to be out here up on a mountain trying to come back down this with a backpack now they had the cutest dog i want to tell you what that dog man i he's as cute as my dog and we got a little shit to do and uh but it did remind me of a story i love telling stories you know that was uh that when i did grand portage trail in minnesota um, it hikes up, and I did it at a time of the year when they hadn't cleared it. So I spent a lot of time clearing stuff out of my way and going over top of trees and everything else. And uh, anyway, I get all the way up to the river. There's a river there. It runs it's the border between the United States and, and Canada. And I'm thinking, well, I'll be here. I'm sure I'll be here by myself. You know, ain't nobody else going to hike that damn trail. And, uh, oh, I'd been there about an hour, hour and a half, and it was getting dark, and I'm all set up eating my, my meal out on the rocks. And uh, here comes this guy, <laughs> and he sets his pack down and all this stuff, you know. And he says, he says, "Hey, man, you you watch my stuff for me." I said, "Well, yeah, I'm keep a bear off of it. Ain't nobody else here, you know." He goes, "Cool, man, cool. You know, hold on, I'll be back." So here he goes. He goes running on back down into the woods, and you know, about another half hour later, here he comes, dragging a, a kayak <laughs> up into the camping area. And I'm thinking, how in the hell did that guy? hiked that kayak all the way up the mountain, you know, over top of trees, through brush, everything. I mean, the guy was buff, obviously, you know, but I just couldn't believe it. And he said what he was doing was he was duplicating the trail that I guess some Indians did way back in the 16 or 1500, something, something like that. And uh, so he's going to be paddling a lot of the way and hiking some of the way, but he, you know, he hiked that, that, divide, that kayak up a mountain i mean and it was I, I don't remember how long the trail was but it wasn't short uh longer than this this was only 2.1 miles well going up and then 2.1 going back but that was more like about three or four going up but anyway that's just my story i just i'll never forget that as long as i live that was also the same trip maybe i'll put the picture in here they had a uh, outhouse at the campsite there by the river and it was all wood and it looked like it had been built in the 1920s or something I mean, no way I was sitting in that damn thing. And when you opened it up, there was this huge, huge spider just looking straight down into the hole where you would have been uh, using. And uh, boy, I just kind of looked at him, took some pictures and shut that door. <laughs> no way I was get, getting in there, but uh, that was the coolest looking outhouse I'd ever seen. But uh, I'll try to find that picture when I make the video. All right, that's it. I just, it just triggered another story in my brain. Thought it was pretty cool. All right, bye. So this is it. We're finishing up the hike, and I ain't gonna lie, I am 
beat. I am so glad to be done. You know, one one word sums up this trip today, and there's always one word, it's diversity. Diversity, there you go. You know, I, I am just shocked at what I saw on the trail. You know, people in flip-flops, people uh, without shirts on, you know, weren't worried about the bugs, and there were no bugs. You know, I guess you don't really have to worry about them. Uh, totally ill-equipped. Nobody had water for the most part. A couple people had water bottles. Blacks, Caucasians, Asians, uh, Koreans, uh, you name it. Everybody's on the trail today. Everybody's having a good time. Um, but the thing is, you know, I guess I would have looked at any of them. Uh, old fat people, skinny people. I forgot about that. Old people, you know. Uh, and then, of course, the young kids, those are the ones, you know, I mean, Man, an eight-year-old, I tell you what, I, I wouldn't want to arm wrestle one of them nine-year-olds. I've had enough humble pudding for one day. I, I couldn't take any more. But uh, I would have looked at all of them and I would have said, there's no way they're going to, you know, make it to the top and back down. But they uh, they walked circles right around me. I guess this crippled old cancer fool, you know, having, having had cancer twice, I just, I can't do this stuff the way they can. And uh, I would have passed judgment on all of them. So I guess I'm a... I'm an everything racist. I hate everything. <laughs> you know, you, you can be black, Caucasian, Asian, Korean, whatever. I hate y'all. No, I, of course I don't. I was uh, just admiring them all. And they, they, none of them even look winded, you know. And uh, I guess it's just embarrassing to me that I'm just so worn out. And you, you see those people and you think, man, well, here comes the rain. I'm going to throw up the umbrella. This is why I brought the umbrella, huh? I finally... I, I carried it all that way, and right here at the end, I get to use it. I just, mainly I want to keep the phone dry. All right, that's it for today. Well, maybe not today, but for the trail.